I've been trying to start this video now for the last four or five days, but we have an unprecedented amount of cloud for New Zealand in early, well, I suppose it's early summer rather than spring. But there is a bit of blue up there. I'm waiting for that blue piece to come along so we can start our tests on this solar panel. This is how I've mounted it. You can either mount it horizontal or vertical and it's held in position with these little rubber cups. The first thing I have to say about it is if you're thinking you're going to get a hundred watts from this you are living on another planet because as ratings go this is the most outrageous claim of any of the Chinese products that I've purchased or reviewed in the past. I'm used to having amplifiers claim they've got 100 watts output and in reality it's about 15. Well the same um, rule applies to this particular solar panel. You couldn't get 100 watts from this if you took it to the surface of the Sun. Now my setup here is quite simple. The solar panel as I've already shown you and this little control box comes with it and we'll have a look inside it presently and this is a lead acid sealed battery this is actually the solar charge controller and the sockets along the bottom well, I should say they're screw terminals go to the solar panel these two go to the battery and these two go to a 12 volt output which is essentially your battery should you wish to use a 12 volt output and is the same potential as the battery itself we also have on here two usb outputs which is primarily what i use this for all the time yes we're actually in bright sunlight now and it's hard to actually see the display but the voltage here is the voltage of the actual battery and this display shows the solar panel and the arrow shows that supply is going to the battery. Now at the moment you can see the battery shows it's fully charged so that arrow is stationary it flashes when it's actually charging. Now, as the battery's full, you can see that's the actual voltage of the battery, and that is, of course, off load. It has protection in there, so you can't overcharge the battery. When you press this button, you'll see an arrow comes on there and a lamp shows. That basically means the output is going from the battery to your 12 volt bulb or whatever you can to connect it to but i don't use that so it doesn't seem to make any difference whether it's on or off anyway now i should point out for this to operate you have to have a 12 volt battery connected because if i remove the battery terminals you'll see the display goes out and it won't actually do anything so you can't use the solar panel directly to do anything if you don't have a battery connected and you can see oh just for a few seconds there you saw the arrow flashing um, because I reconnected the battery this is my battery and I've had this battery now for probably about seven years and it's still performing absolutely superbly. It doesn't seem to have any problems holding a charge at all. It's actually a nine amp hour battery and it will deliver that for well, claims 20 hours. Now the reason I've chosen this kind of battery is largely because I've got it and it's a very easy battery and very tolerant battery it will pass huge amounts of current for relatively short periods of time has a nominal 12 volts output and 
12 volts is primarily what it will settle at it when, when you're using it it's 12 to 12 and a half volts um, with some kind of load offload you will get 13.6 or slightly slightly more when it's being charged if you're going to buy one of these setups the things you should be aware of is a you will never get your money back you will never produce enough electricity to justify the cost so if you bought one of these solar panels and you think oh i'm going to be powering my washing machine or my fridge no i'm sorry you won't on a good day with bright sunshine you will get between 15 and 20 watts now bearing in mind in new zealand we have good sunshine and very intense sunshine at times and the maximum i have ever got out of this panel is 22 watts and that is in really bright overhead sunshine but saying that on a semi cloudy day like today um, it will still charge um, but at probably about five or five or six watts so what's it any good for well this is one of the things i use it for it powers this little clock which i bought from banggood it was the kit which i made a video of maybe four or five years ago and it powers that 24 hours a day the video that you're watching at the moment is being recorded with free electricity from the solar panel i use the 5 volt usb output on here to charge my camera my telephone let's do a few voltage measurements so that is now the actual voltage coming off the solar cell unloaded it says minus purely because i've got the test leads around the wrong so short circuit current is 400 milliamps so if you do the mathematics you'll find that is a long long way from 100 watts and obviously that's into a short circuit it will be considerably less when you run it into the charger itself we're outside of the house now looking into the window where the solar panel is well the sun's gone in a little bit now and because i'm trying to show you the how the solar panel actually looks but all you can see is a nice reflection of the sky fairly simple four phillips head screws so we'll whip these out heat transfer pads and one on that device let's take that off so what have we got well there's quite a lot in there considering but something I have just noticed look at that well I'm surprised that the 5 volts is as good as it is because that inductor is broken isn't it you can clearly see the windings exposed but saying that I use that all the time <laughs> and the 5 volts is remarkably good so I just wonder how good it could be if the inductor wasn't broken this is the first time I've taken this out of the box so it's as big a surprise to you as it is to me not something that pleases me to be honest still interesting quite well made well <laughs> quite well made apart from the fact it's broken but amazingly it still works and there was no loose bits in the box so it was clearly broken in the factory i don't know whether that's no the rest of it's nice and secure so what's the verdict well for what it is it's okay two things to consider it will not give you a hundred watts under any circumstances you're talking about between 10 and 20 watts which if you 
if you think that's adequate for doing what you want it to do, and I would suggest the only application it's any good for is charging a lead acid battery. If you've got a flat battery, i.e. a car battery or something like that, this will never charge it in a thousand years. But if you've got a battery that you can just top up daily and use for USB functions or lighting an LED or something like that overnight, then it's going to be fine. But the other thing is, will you ever get your money back? And the answer is probably no, because you've got to purchase a battery. Well, luckily I had a battery. I know I had to purchase it at some point, but I had the battery. But if I didn't, you're talking about probably 50 or so dollars for the battery, more if you want a higher amperage. And overall, you're talking about $100 for the project, which is about £50 UK. Don't know how many American dollars, but uh, <laughs> you can buy a lot of electricity from the grid for that kind of money. So it's just fun. And I, I bought it with that in mind. I knew just by the size of the panel, it was not going to produce 100 watts. So there you go. If it's a bit of fun you want and you, the thrill of getting the fact that this video isn't costing me any money for my electricity and my telephone, for that sort of thing, it's absolutely fine.